is Jennifer Weinert. I am a third year PhD student in the Endocrinology and Animal Biosciences program at Rutgers University, uh, affiliated with our Animal Sciences Department. My PhD advisor is Dr. Carrie Williams, and uh, my SARE project is focusing on implementing cool and warm season integrated rotational grazing systems for horses. You can see we got the horses in the background grazing. They've just been moved into this rotational section. Our research project here is focusing on implementing integrated warm and cool season rotational grazing systems in horse grazing. And so what we want to do is in our rotational sections include sections that are planted with cool season grasses that have a C3 photosynthetic system uh, with warm season grasses that have a C4 photosynthetic system. And the reason behind this is that traditionally in the Northeast uh, of the United States and the, and the upper regions of the United States, we plant our horse pastures with a cool season grass mix. And those grasses tend to have what we call the summer slumps. So during the summer months, because of the type of photosynthetic system that they have, uh, those grasses are just less productive when it's hot outside and dry in the, in the middle of summer. And so we see this dip in production. Typically horses have to be moved into a dry lot um, and or it leads to overgrazing of your pasture forage. The warm season grasses actually grow best when it is hot and dry outside. And so they are most productive when the cool season grasses are least productive. And so by staggering these grasses in our rotational grazing systems, our hope is that we get a higher level of production overall for the entire grazing season, um, thereby minimizing the time that the horses spend in the dry lot um, and minimizing overgrazing of our pasture sections. So we come out here and we do random sampling. So we kind of just zigzag randomly all the way through the pasture and take samples every 20 steps all the way from one end to the other. We took samples, the nutrient content as we were rotating them. I also did a diurnal sampling. So we, mm -hmm. I came out every four hours for two days and mm -hmm. took samples all the way through. We do herbage mass too. So we measure you know, how much is, is out here at the beginning and the end of every rotation. And so before we come out here, we'll, we'll do some random sampling for herbage mass as well. We keep track of that. But it has environmental and uh, economic implications. And from the economic standpoint, when you lock your horses in the dry lot, you have to be feeding them hay uh, for that whole time. And so the idea behind this is by doing this that we can decrease uh, that supplemental feed cost during those summer months so we can keep them on pasture the entire time. Uh, so we're going to study the, the economic piece of this as well to make sure that this is a, a solid economic recommendation for our horse producers in this part of the country. The other side of this too is that there is a horse health component. So um, these grasses not only you know, grow during this optimal time for us to fill in that, that uh, dip in summer production, but they also are low in non-structural carbohydrate or typically are low in non-structural carbohydrate. And non-structural carbohydrates have been implicated in um, kind of exacerbating conditions associated with metabolic disease in horses. And so by integrating these grasses into these systems, uh, perhaps we can provide a pasture forage source for horses that have issues with these, these metabolic disorders.